bends out to the part of that end cut off. Yeah, you wanna tell the people what just happened? Um, yeah, so we put a new brake booster in this and we masked the cylinder because it was leaking. We put the brakes and then we went to drive, well, Jake went to drive it out and Jake broke my car and now the pedal goes to the floor. <laughs> um, well, something popped inside the brand new brake booster. We're not really sure what it, what it is, but the car still stops. Just not very good. <laughs> Stop's not very good, but, but it still pulls like a But choo choos! <laughs> I love that the ass ends started getting squirrely too. Yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. So what do we got going on, bud? Okay, so we tried to Frankenstein our brakes a little bit using a Volkswagen Jetta booster with a E30 master cylinder. And what's happening is you go to apply the brakes, and in this case, we felt a pop, and now the pedal sits about an inch and a half off the floor. Uh, it still stops really well, surprisingly, but like I said, the pedal is pretty much on the floor. Uh, so we're gonna take it back apart. We have a new Jetta uh, master cylinder coming. So we're going to go that route. We're going to use the Jetta booster with the new Jetta master and see if that takes care of our brake problems. But first we have to take it all back apart again <laughs> for the like, third time. So let's make a mess. Yeah, and it's moving with the diaphragm, it looks like. Yep. Take that off before we forget. Now I need a warranty out of master cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> How do you even do this? Because it's warrantying two pieces. I don't worry, does it? Just, yeah. hey, I broke this. Just hand, hand it to him. Mm. We're going to separate it. Yeah, let's separate it so that we can yeah, know exactly what the problem is. Another special tool. You need a pickle fork too. Wow. Oh, she's out. Yeah, it's split. But it makes me wonder if this thing's overextending for one thing. And then it's cocking weird or something like that when it makes contact because it can move around. Yeah, maybe it's something like that or it's getting stuck because the shaft of the brake booster, like the, the shaft of the pin that's in there is too big. Yeah. Um, it's too small in the front and it's too big in the back. Something weird like that. Yeah, we'll try Do you that. have the OEM booster? Uh, yes. So let's compare them. So that one's got the same little pin, but look, look at the rod of the deck. It goes all the way up to the mounting flange, uh -huh. whereas this one is sunken in a ton. Um, we ran into a hiccup where we've got a spacing issue between the Volkswagen brake booster and the BMW master cylinder. So here's what happens. The BMW master cylinder does not sit as far inside of the brake booster as a OEM Volkswagen one does. So there's a pin on the inside of the brake booster and then there's the shaft on the inside of the master cylinder and that pin is meant to press the back which is what pushes the piston in and actuates your brakes and when you have all BMW components or all Volkswagen components 
they work correctly. They have the right spacing, the pins touch at the right time. But when you're mixing and matching these two, you'll find that you've got a space between the BMW Master Cylinder and the Volkswagen Booster. So we discovered this, um, ran into some issues with the booster because it was actually getting stuck on the Master Cylinder. Um, there is actually a couple of really easy ways to solve this. So if you're using the same brake booster that we are, which is like a Mark II you know, GTI, Mark II Golf, Mark II Jetta, it's kind of all about that same uh, era of booster. Um, it's actually, it actually has a threaded portion on it. So the pin, this is actually inside of the brake booster, the Volkswagen brake booster. So what we were able to do was thread it out. This was a, what is it, a six millimeter? Yeah, six, millimeter? six by one. So, yeah, but the... Uh, the six mil. So it's, oh, the, yeah, that's a six mil. It is a six millimeter, yeah. So you use a six millimeter, uh, like quarter inch drive to pop this guy out. And then you're able to unthread that. And what we found is that we need about an inch more of length. So you can't adjust it out on this one. Yes, you can adjust it, but you can't make up the difference with it. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, so it is an M6 by 1.0 fastener that will thread in here. That's what this pin is. So all you've got to do is you can pick up a bolt. Um, best practice would be to pick up a cap screw because this is um, the, the size of the end of an M6 cap screw is exactly the size of the inside of the BMW master cylinder. So it sits in there really good. Um, but we don't have a cap screw that's the exact length that we want to use. So we're actually going to use a regular M6 bolt and we're just going to kind of smooth out the head of it just a tiny bit, take a little bit of the lips off, and this guy threads in perfectly. Now the length of the shank is two and a quarter. So a two and a quarter. So the shank length, bottom of the head, to the bottom last thread, two and a quarter. And that works out to be absolutely perfect to where we're threading in a decent amount of threads on this thing. You can still use a locking nut. You can still use one of the nuts from this to like make sure you lock it down tight and um, it'll thread right in and they'll give you the exact same clearance uh, or exact same distance that the OEM BMW brake booster has. Um, and that pin on the OEM brake booster, the BMW one, is almost flush with the top across here. It sticks up ever so slightly. It's about, about an eighth of an inch or so, uh, maybe even a tiny bit less than that, but I'd say if you did eighth of an inch, that should be safe. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grind down the top of this thing so that it just fits inside of the BMW brake booster, or excuse me, BMW brake master, and uh, do the lock screw and throw this thing back together. That should solve our problem. <laughs> if I was older and fatter, I'd have the gullet flap. <laughs> Look like a fucking turkey running. <laughs> happens when you press the brake pedal. Um, so this connects to the brake pedal here, pushes the rod through the diaphragm of the brake booster into your master cylinder. So we're going to see if we get any binding feeling or if you feel any slop. Um, so both times we put the brake booster in, you feel it pop. And we're mm -hmm. going to see if that happens right now. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is your pedal side. Yep. Obviously that's where the hydraulics actually take place. So in theory, yeah, we push on that rod, we'll actuate the piston, and we'll make sure there's it works. Is there any space? Uh, I don't feel like it. I feel really good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, there's maybe, maybe a quarter of an inch at most. You can feel just a little yeah. bit of play. But you might sure. want that. Oh. Yeah, so before we had a lot of slop and then the pedal just, just kind of stayed down. So it was getting held 
Because having to move far, and when you take up that slack, the booster was kind of stuck. Yeah. It was getting pinned there. So I think we're gonna be good. Um, obviously, we're not pressing with our foot, and your leg's a lot stronger than you're gonna be able to do on the workbench. Mm -hmm. um, but it feels good. It's got an opportunity to do what we need it to do. Yeah. Toss it in. Sweet. Throw it. <laughs> Till we get to the road. Oh yeah, I don't need to stop right now. Oh yeah, brakes grab real nice. Noticing any drivability changes? No, it actually it feels pretty healthy right now. For the better. Like yep. any like have you noticed any changes over before? Um too soon to tell. That's definitely wheel spin. It's, it feels healthier. Yeah. Um, your um bluff L doesn't sound too bad there too. Um, I'll watch the boost gauge and let yeah. you know what we hit. Yeah, but that sounded good. A lot of the issues I was having were on like fourth gear on the highway. So if you guys have any ideas about why this thing is pulling timing once it warms up and it's perfectly fine when it's cold, let us know. We need some help. Yeah, I need lots of help. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there though. Oh, it's getting better. It's better. It's the wrong color valve cover. That's the problem. That's what's pulling timing. Yep, we should paint it white with a big red circle in the middle of it. Oh, that's true. J J Pan's angry. Let's uh pull the cover, this cover, and test a couple coils real quick while they're hot and see if anything just has high resistance. Just rule it out. Yep. Yep. Ah, I hate cars. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I love cars. They're just annoying. Uh, they just can be annoying. It's like. You don't really get, you get some enjoyment out of the hobby, but it's a lot of time doing this kind of crap. It's a lot of tinkering. It's a lot of tinkering. Yeah. On the plus side though, the shock for the hood prop is fantastic. It's breezy and neither of us have gotten hit in the head yet. I mean, we didn't have to change the motor to do that. Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> 